This is how you stop AI tools like Replit, Lovable Dev, Bolt, even Cursor from hallucinating and essentially stop these tools from getting stuck when you're trying to build a SaaS product or any tool that you want with these AI tools. Now, what a lot of people do in Replit is they'll create a new project and they'll just keep talking to the same agent over and over again. And eventually this agent starts to get confused and you might get to a certain point where you just notice that there's too many bugs and you give up on the project. That is very common. And we found a simple way to get around this so that you can get products shipped. Now, the way you do it in Replit is you get it to create a channel log file and you ask it to not remove any existing entries. So I'll show you right here, for example, I've created this channel log file right here where I've been building an AI SEO tool and what it does is it logs all the changes that it makes. And it's done this since the very start. It adds in what's pending, it adds in notes. And then what I've also done on top of that is every time I create a new feature, for example, I create a feature that does keyword research. I get the AI agent to go and write documentation on how it works, usage, technical details like the API I'm using, data structure. And if you have all of this documented, you can then get the agent to reference what it's already done. Because one of the issues we found is that after a certain amount of usage with one agent chat, it will get stuck and it will often forget what it's working on. So what I like to do is after about $1.50 of usage, which you can see right here, I would get it to update the channel log, update any of the documentation for the features, and then I would create a brand new chat and I would add the files down here for context so that it's pulling information from those documents. And so when you follow this method, what ends up happening is the AI agent has documentation to reference. It doesn't go off on a tangent or come up with new ways to do it. It's looking at the structure already in place and it's really just acting more like a human developer because any human developer would have some form of documentation or even off the top of their head, just know how the data is structured, how the features work, what APIs are using, how certain functionality works. So it's really important that you do this and then I can guarantee that we'll get much further with these tools that you're building and you'll actually be able to ship them instead of doing what most people do, which is they come up with an idea, they start prompting it, and after say 30 minutes of using the tool, they find there's too many errors and they just give up.